All right, we are back. That was a very bizarre technical difficulty on the last one. Here, Linus. Well, I don't know what that, I don't know what happened, but uh, we had some crazy technical difficulties. Um, but where were we? So we had probably a first. If you're watching this and you're like, Wait, they didn't show me the verse and pre-chorus. Watch the video we just did before this, before the stream crapped out. So we got to the chorus. So the chords for the chorus were the same as the pre-chorus. It's C minor to F sus to B flat major seven to G dominant flat nine. And the voicings I'm doing at the top are so E flat, G, B flat, and D. And then same voicing, but over F and then down to C, so. So that's just, over the B flat, I'm actually just playing an F try, like F, A, and C, because of the implied chord is B flat major nine. And then, so over the G, I'm doing an F, Diminish. So you'll notice I'm not actually playing the root note of the chord in any of my right hand voicings, which is a pretty common thing I do. That's how I almost always play piano. Um, but so, so yeah, here's the chorus. Oh, I guess I actually do F, A, D, and C, uh, F, A, C, and D in the third chord. So now you know the whole song. I'll do a verse and chorus. Or I'll go from the top. People give a lot of love to the downward piano gliss. Don't sleep on the upward piano gliss. Like, that's a really cool sound that we employ a lot in this song. And the piano for this song was recorded in like, out of the, stu at the piano we have in our studio, which is like an awesome old dinky upright piano. So it's got that real bar room feel when you go. Um, so the only other part of this song to really know is the bridge, which is a cool part that a lot of people ask me about. So it's this. So that on, in the left is C, D, G, but it's all just like with the passing notes. And then in the left, in the right, it's that same first voicing on the C minor 7. E flat, G, B flat, and D. 
And so F, A, C, and F over the D minor 7. This is a cool one. F, B, and E flat. So that's kind of a G7, what is that, like a flat 13, I want to say, but that's not really how I think of it. It's more like a G7 with sharp 5. G7 sharp 5 is really what it is. Classic two minor, one over three, four, E diminished, F sus, five sus. That's like we do that in so many of our songs. And it ain't worth the pain just to watch it all pass away. It's like that's like a classic. And then back to the chorus. I'm proud of you. That E half diminished. F sus. And then just ride it out. So that end bit is is a reference back to the back to the intro, like That intro is like a tease of the like double tag of the last chorus. So anyway, that's all probably up. Let me know if I missed anything that's crucial. Um, uh, that little synth line after the chorus is probably. It's all just B flat pentatonic. Um, I think that that's like all the key things. And then yeah, the horn line is like. Those is, those those are kind of no, the notes there. Um, I think that's pretty much it, though. All right, so Linus, how are the people feeling? Um, well, we have some like questions, a lot of comments. Um, do you want people to start commenting songs that they want you to teach next? Well, why don't you give me the best question that you've seen so far? All right. Well, someone just asked a question. Um, when you're writing a song, do you create the melody first or the progression? That's an awesome question. I think that like I lean really heavily on chords personally. Like I'm all about harmony and chords. So I would say like I tend to lean on the progression first. But often I will get like a little chunk of a little nugget of melody. So like for this song, for example, the first thing I thought of was... I'm probably yeah. So I did have that little bit of melody. I'm probably yeah. I'm probably yeah. Like I had that. And then for the verse, I knew that I wanted to do like. I like that vibe, but I didn't know what the melody was. But it kind of comes together. Like I just kind of like sing over it and it just kind of comes out. But generally speaking, I mean, I never like come up with a melody and then think, oh, what should the chords be like? It, everything's very chord and harmony driven for me. That's an awesome question though. And I've spoken with a lot of like great songwriters and musicians who don't think that way, who come up with melody first or come up with lyrics first. For me, it all comes down to the chords and then the melody and the lyrics are just as important, but they just like, are less of the foundation for me, and then I work to make those the best they can be. Great question. Yeah. Um, someone just also said, it'd be great if you could do something like you did with Breakfast Recipes for this album. I will. We're working on it. 
that will come out soon. I'm trying to think of what it should be called, like living room furniture, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe living room furniture. Um, but uh, yes, we will be doing that. And it will be out ASAP. Um, but in the meantime, comment which song you're most wanting to know, and I'll do that one next. Do has anybody commented a request of a song next? We got a bunch. Um, on yeah, well, I've seen a media. few. Uh, I've someone. A lot said, of people asked about who someone said you living are. room design. Um, I've seen a few. Uh, a few too easies. I don't know if. Interesting. Um, do Do you want one more question though, or? No, let's jump right. into another song. Too easy could be cool. Um, that... Oh, I've also seen some... Oh, now now I'm seeing two... Three straight heartburn All right, heartburn requests. it is. And a more. I think heartburn seems like... So, yeah. heartburn's a really hard one to be able to say what how the chords go, because on the album, what really happened is we played... We just kind of jammed on this, like... E, the whole song is based around this E-flat, um, like... E flat bluesy kind of thing. So like, and we went around and kind of did that on every instrument. So like I played it on clav and Rhodes, piano, guitar, bass. I mean, I didn't play all of those things. Uh, I don't remember exactly how it went down. <laughs> but, but, um, and then we kind of chopped them all up. And when you listen to the album, that's what you're hearing is like little snippets. So like, I couldn't tell you exactly what every single part is, but certainly when, certainly the basis of it. And when we play it live is this, we're in E flat and it's kind of like all built around this E flat, uh, seven sharp nine vibe. So like E and then G C sharp, E flat, um, F sharp. So like, then to the four chord, the A flat seven. So it's just one to four back and forth. And I do a little, which is just like a flip to the four of the four. And so it passes in the bass from the one through the three to the four. So like, G, A flat. And then the second time, instead of the G, it goes through the A, which is a really cool chord. That's like super funky. That's awesome. Thank you, Linus. <laughs> so it's like E, G, then A. So that's the basis of like the whole main section. Um, let's go, uh, and we start with these horn notes, B flat, A flat, A flat, G, C sharp, and then the whole sw swatty Steve Swatkins of uh, Alan Stone's band is doing, and his, uh, his own project and a bunch of cool stuff, he's doing the talk box, he's like, ah, it's gonna be all right. It's like a clap. It's like a bunch of intersecting stuff. Ooh, ooh, oh, oh. And then, that's a big unison band line. So that's B, C, E flat, F sharp, F, E flat, D flat, A flat, F sharp. And then we go over to, so then the whole verse is in B flat, or the whole verse is B flat. It's like that's just B flat seven. So it's like the five chord. We're just waiting to land on the one. Now we go to F minor seven, but when your heart gets burned, so the dome, 
and then B flat seven sharp nine. Don't be concerned. So the same voicing that we're doing on the one, but over the five. B flat, D, A flat, B flat, D flat. B concert is gonna be alright. cool crazy weird sounds and then this full band line comes in that's like this so that's it's all in this like uh, E flat bluesy thing There's so, a slight alteration the second time. The, right? Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the first time and the second time is that flat three three one five. So if you're playing that on guitar or bass, not sure the best way to to do it, but maybe one of our people will do a tutorial of how they play it. But that is the line. It's full band unison. <laughs> Hey, I'm in C minor, wanna tall grass of water, C minor 7, I'll do it on a different set. Tall grass of water, A flat 7, heard that makes it hotter on the pipe, and then just back to E flat, boo doo 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 that horn line. Back to that five, that B flat with the sharp nine. So once again, that bridge was. You want a tall glass of water? But I heard that. So six minor to the A flat seven to the E flat seven. Tune after that. It just goes out, it jams out on this the whole time, it just builds. It goes. So, and those vocals are like. And then below that. And then. So it's like something like that. It's a three-part harmony. Also, pro tip: in the key of E flat, E flat like bluesy minor pentatonic, all the black keys just are the the like notes in your minor pentatonic scale. So like doing a gliss on the black keys is going to give you a very like in key sound. So like no you come on come on the fire It really gives you like the key that you're and in. you can't really do that in another key as easily probably. You can't do that in another 
key as easily, but there are some keys you can, like for example, if you're in B major, then this is like the two, three, five, six, and seven of the B major scale. So it'll give you this really flowery sound, like for example, in Do You Want to Do Nothing With Me? Or like in Whoever You Are, it goes to a B. So there's certain keys, pretty much anything that's like B major or E flat minor, or there's a couple other that it'll work, but being aware of like what your glissandos are actually doing musically can be really cool. Cause there's other ones where like the white keys are in key. Um, in fact, this is another cool thing on probably up all the downward glisses, we wanted them to really be in key. So we recorded them in C and then pitch shifted them down a whole step because the song's in the key of B flat. So like, it goes like, you know. But that, this gliss really implies the key of C. So like imagine it went. Like that feels more in key. So that's kind of a cool, funny trick that probably doesn't matter, but we have fun doing it. So anyway, right. that's the Heartburn song. Give me the best question, Linus, that you've seen. All right. Uh, any, all right. Anyone have anything to say? Um, I saw someone say, what, like, is this, a, is this effect? Like, what is this sound? Yeah, cool. It sounds like a wah, they yeah, said. Yeah, 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 totally. So that's a good, so this is a good opportunity for me to talk about my keyboard sounds. So mostly when I do these tutorials, I've usually done piano, but I want to do this on my, on my keyboard. I use Nord keyboards, the Nord Stage 2. This is a hammer action one, so it actually feels like a piano. The one that I bring on tour, if you've seen me play the shows, is one that's semi-weighted, which honestly I use just because it's lighter to bring around on tour. Um, but Nord has some really great sounds. On the album, the sounds are not Nord. Although I love the Nord sounds, it's all the real thing, mostly. Um, so if you're hearing a piano, it's a real piano. If you're hearing an electric piano, it's generally speaking a real electric piano. Um, but mostly, yeah, like I've got this kind of Fender Rhodes sound. I've got a piano. And then yeah, on a lot of our songs, I use this thing, which is a clav. So here's what the clav sounds like just playing. Do you use this on like Toxic, it sounds like? Um, I'm not sure, but I, I use it, I kind of mess around with what I use on that, but I use it on like uh, Shot, I use it on our cover of uh, Hot in Here, a lot of the covers, Get Busy, and then I add this Overdrive, and then I add, this is the key, this is what that person's referring to, an Auto Wah. Did you make that yourself, or is that like a thing that came with the... I put it on myself, <laughs> but it, it's one of the pre-existing effects. Um, and then this guy, you can do a full step pitch bend. So it's cool because you can use it to do a full note, like... But you can also use it just for vibrato. There you go. So that's a bit about my sounds. And then when you see me live, I actually have an organ, like, um, and I layer that organ on top of any of those sounds. And then I also have a bunch of other sounds, but I'm constantly layering them with a pedal that I have hooked up to the control pedal. Nord is like really amazing and you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so anyway, um, were there any other songs that were heavily requested? Um, I've seen a lot of more, but... Cool. And, and does anyone have any other things? One person said, uh, said Hot in Here, but I don't think that we're doing things outside <laughs> of the living room. Hot in Here, I'll do Hot in Here for one minute. Hot in Here is very easy. E flat minor, seven. It, F sharp, six. 
F7, E7. And then the chorus is E flat minor 7, A7, C sharp 7, B7. So that's how we do it. Flat seven, B7. So that's our version of that song. Um, right, the get, bu <laughs> get Busy would be a whole other thing. Um, Ask him if he can write a book or article about his composition methods. I want to know what's in his head, in caps. I want to know what's in my head so bad. <laughs> um, all right, so let's do more. That seems like a good one. So maybe we'll stop it there. I've seen, I've seen more and too easy. Those are the main things. I've seen. Cool. So we'll do those two songs, and then we will have done a third of the album. And if you're enjoying this, I'll do it again, or we'll we'll go up on uh, I'll put them up on YouTube or something. Um, so more is a lot. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, so those first huge hits and more are F minor. Then G, then E flat over G, and then A flat. So you're hearing a ton of different things at once, but the piano part is one of my favorite chords in the world is in a given key. So let's say we're in E flat for this song. You have G in the bass, F, B flat, and E flat. So it's the three and then the two, five, and one. You're gonna hear that all over our music. I don't even know exactly what to call it. It's kind of like a one over three slash, it's kind of like a three minor, but it's just got this really warm feeling. Um, so, so that's F minor seven, and then that cool three chord. But then you're also hearing the horns go, And then, so I guess if you were to combine those, it'd be like, that's kind of how you would, but that is the vibe. And yeah, everyone's got their own thing that they're adding to this puzzle. But a big thing that we like to do is like impose the one chord. So that in this case, E flat, over other chords. So that's basically like. That's what a lot of this song is about. So now, if anyone wants to learn what this crazy downward piano Someone thing just is. said B flat suspended 411. Um, yeah, you could call it that, but the G's in the bass. So I feel like you're right that those are the notes in it. But I would prefer to think of it as like a one add not an E flat add nine over G. That's if I had to call it something, I'd call it an E yeah, flat. Yeah, someone eight. just said E flat add nine over G. There you yeah. go. That's kind of what I would call it. So I'm on the page with that person. But um, um, so then yeah, after now we've got this crazy thing. You guys get that? <laughs> um, okay, so it's E flat, then F diminished, with F in the bass, then F sharp diminished. What's cool is if you go downward in whole steps with diminished chords, the bass can go up in half steps. Like. Just a cool thing that can happen. So F sharp diminished, then G minor seven. Then we jump down to this B diminished, and then C minor seven, B minor seven, B flat seven, E dominant nine, and that's a cadence that you're gonna hear all over this song. So, ba, 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 then A flat, 
major seven, and I love to do this thing where I roll off the two or the nine, I guess you could. Then back to that E flat add nine over G that we're calling it. Uh, and then to F seven. And then to B flat sus, which is where we land for this big build up. So once again, that's E flat, F diminished, F sharp diminished, G minor, B diminished, C minor seven, B minor seven, B flat seven, A flat seven. Sorry, what? I think I said all of that wrong. C minor seven, B minor seven, B flat minor seven, E flat seven, A flat major seven, E flat add nine over G, uh, F uh, dominant. think that this hit is on the one, but it's actually on the and of four. So it's an anticipation of the one. So if you're playing this and you're counting it, it's actually, this is out a lot of time, but. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And so yeah, that'll trip your drummers up. Um, so then the whole verse, we've got this guy going. I, I, I don't actually remember on the album. I think I may be playing in three octaves on the album. On the album, it's actually three different pianos happening at the same time. There's one that's just doing this the whole time. There's one that's doing the chords. And then there's one that's doing like, like all those kind of like, like little. Someone just said, I hear the Randy Newman influence with the rolling off the two. Totally. Say it, say all the way. Say all the way. Very smart person who ever said that. Hey, Jimmy Ray. Um, uh, yeah, Randy is all about... Um, okay, so the chords to the verse. So it's just, this whole song is built around the one to the five minor seven, B flat minor seven, to the one dominant E flat seven to the A flat major seven. This whole song is basically that do 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 classic cadence, very gospely. So I don't even know what the best way for me to show voicings because there's what I do live, but that's not really what's on the album. I'm trying to approximate three pianos at the same time, but do 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 that's what I do live, but it's really like do 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 that's what it is. And then after the second one, we go to this A flat minor six. The four minor six is like one of my other absolute favorite chords. So, and then again, now we're gonna go D half diminished. A flat C, da 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 da. That's G seven, da da ba. C minor seven. So that's kind of a two five one to the six minor, for all of you music nerds. Um, and then very Stevie Wonder kind of thing there to the A half diminished. And then we're gonna go back up to D flat. I'm adding. I guess nine, I'm just adding the one of the key we're in. And then B flat sus. So it's a whole lot there, but do 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 five minor, one dominant four. Sorry, I'll speak in the notes. E flat, B flat seven, B flat minor seven, E flat seven, A flat major seven, A flat minor six, and then E flat seven, or E flat da 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 ba da ba. Then to the D half diminished, G7, C minor 7, A half diminished, D flat major, B flat sus. And the chorus is just those same chords. There will be more. Verse. 
on line. Second chorus, there will be more. So now we get a little extension where we go through the there will be more. So that's kind of like a, uh, it's basically a G7, but without the G. There will be more. And then, so now we're into that cadence I was talking about from earlier. C minor seven. And many more, and many, many more. So that's C minor seven. B minor 7, B flat minor 7, E flat 7, and then F9. So I'm going, there will be more. This is now E flat over B flat. A great chord, also super Randy Newman, often gets like miswritten or understood in chord charts, but it's a super great chord to kind of like lean into the five without being on the five. So E flat over B flat. There will be more. There will be more. Another really awesome chord, or one of my favorites. The That same four minor six, the A flat minor six that I was talking about, but over the five. We use that all the time also. We use that in, you know, but do you want to do nothing with me? It's like that same chord. It has such a nice tug to it. There will be more, there will be more. There will be. And then the whole song is just the same. This is some crazy synth line. Many, many more, just that same more, and many more, many, many more, and then that same switch through the B, uh, like the G7 without the G or G9. There will be more, and many more, many, many more to the four. That be there. idea. Very key rhythmic thing is that that one's anticipated. The other ones are both. And many more, many, many more. That's on the beat. But the last one is like more. And many more. And It's just um, going up the E flat major pentatonic. Wow. So it's like. So, like, and I'm kind of just like. It's just like kind of a way to like build excitement. And then, yeah, we're just doing there will be more. And many more, many, many more. And then there's that like. There will be, which is that same passing chord, the G7 without the G. So it's, um, and the reason why I keep saying that is because I think some people might actually be hitting a G. I don't even know what's happening at that point, but it's this big, there will be, and then the whole giant choir, which is just me and Gracie, but like 20 of us, sings more, and then we sing a C minor, and then the band comes, So that's just C minor. B minor 7, B flat minor 7, E flat 7, and then ending on the F9, the same chord that we did in the end of the second chorus. So that's more. Someone uh, someone asked, uh, what is this song about? Hmm. That's... Isn't, it, isn't it, if I mean, if I don't understand correctly, isn't this kind of like similar to what Anne Many More is about? Yeah, so a lot of people would think that that we wrote this song and then and many more, which is the last song on the album, was kind of like written from that. 
But it's actually the other way around. Um, and many more is something that we wrote for our grandmother Anne, who passed away almost two years ago to the day. She, um, and she was a really important person in all of our lives. And um, she used to say this thing. She would say, and many more, all the time. She would actually sing it all the time. like And many more, yeah. And, exactly. We'd sing, happy birthday to you. And then like the old Jewish woman in the background would go, and many more. That was like her signature thing. Um, and she was a great singer and very much a center of attention. And in all of our cards, she would write, and many more. Um, and if you know you did something great, or if, if she came to a show and and we said, yeah, that was a really good show, and she said, and and many more, she'd always say that, um, and it just really stuck with us. So that's we wrote um, and many more as almost this like mournful prayer esque song devoted to her, um, and that was the soul thing of and many more and those lyrics are just and many more and many more and then there were no more and how I'm longing for so many more and that was it and literally the last thing we wrote for the album was we were like we need a different song to open the album because originally you were going to have and many more we were going to have and many more open the album and wasn't it if you don't mind me saying wasn't it originally going to be called the first song that way you had like the first song and the last song we were thinking about calling it and many more parentheses the first song so that the last song was connected to that yeah but we thought you know what like we need something really like exciting and fun to kick off the album and we want to end it with and many more and that was when we kind of had the idea of like we should just make like an upbeat version of more. And it started out as just like a 30 second intro that would be like this overture where we would do this like super upbeat, happy, gospel-y, more and many more upbeat thing. And then we, it was just really fun and people really liked it and we were like, we gotta make this into a whole song. So that was the genesis of that. So in, to answer your question, which I haven't done, um, more, in a lot of ways is still an homage to our grandma and we want the album to be this book ended by these songs about our grandma who we love and miss dearly. Um, but in another way, m more is also just about the feeling of being down in any number of ways and realizing that like there's more life to come and it, it's sort of more of an optimistic song of saying you know, I'm staring at the ceiling from the ground. Um, I'd have to like look at the lyrics to pick <laughs> apart each of them specifically, but like the idea that like you're telling yourself or someone else that needs it, you know, there will be more. And a funny thing that happens on Lawrence songs because Gracie and I are singing it is like the ambiguity of whether you're telling yourself something or telling it to someone else. It's hard to say because like Gracie sings a verse and then I come in and sing there will be more. Am I telling her that? But she's harmonizing. Is she telling herself yeah. that? Those wires sort of get crossed, but that's kind of cool in a way, I think. Um, so anyway, more is sort of like jumping from this launch pad of like mourning the loss of our grandma, but also um, knowing that there will be more. There's more life to come and all the things that that could mean. Um, so anyway, I think that's a good note to end it on. Well, those were probably up the Harper and Song and more. And uh, we'll do some more later. Thank you guys so much for tuning well, in. Someone said, can you quickly show us Get Busy? All right. We'll end with <laughs> Get Busy going from our serious conversation about more to a little. Yeah, because I see people covering this online and some of these chords are crazy. So the key is that this pre chorus part is. G minor, F minor 7, F diminished, D augmented, E flat major 9, C minor 7, A flat major 9, and we're in the key of G minor.
fa- another one of my favorite chords. I know I've been saying that about a lot of chords. Exactly. But you lo- really love chords. I love chords. But this is one of my. This is another one of my favorite chords. Um, is the major nine of the like sharp one in a minor key. So like this is the key we're in. We use it in superficial. That's the place where we use it. That's in like C minor seven. Uh, so go, so go and write your song. So go and write. Uh, where the hell is it? Uh, uh, so go and write your song right here. Just know that you're the superficial one. So that's a team. We also use an alibi. Uh, the This is a D minor. No, you keep it. It did just to knit the time. That's the E flat major seven again. But anyway, so that's get busy. Those are the trickiest ones. The rest of it is just like it's like hits. I do this. Now those chords. And then it's G minor seven, B flat major seven, A seven. Uh, is that it? Yeah, yeah. G minor seven, B flat major seven, A seven, C seven. It's kind of like the hot near ones, but a little different than A seven, C seven. And I think one thing that's cool is that our bassist, I think, goes down on the second set of chords. So it's like, I don't, but I think he does. Then I'm like, uh, something like that, but you don't have to ask him. Um, but that's pretty much it. And when we're doing those big holds, like over the jump solo, that's all on that cool chord, the A flat major. So that's get busy. I think I. Oh, and this has got to be my favorite comment of the day to end it though. All right, go. Y'all for should it. do a, definitely do a funky cover of Meet the Mets. I would love to do that. Exciting announcements this week, including some more tour dates that are in some places that we have never been before, to say the least. So stay tuned for that. Peace out, y'all.